Hey there, Tracy. How are you doing today? Welcome to my channel. Today I thought I'd share with you something kind of fun and this is going to be making some textured paper using up some of your scraps. I'll show you a few examples at the end of the video, but this is the one we'll be making today. Um, to start out with, what I'm going to do, and you'll have to excuse the uh, alcohol ink stuck to my fingers, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my one single box of scraps. Trust me, I have boxes of scraps everywhere. But this is the one that I keep handy under my desk, and it looks like it needs to be emptied out. It's going to start to spill over. But I'm just going to grab just a few pieces of white cardstock, and this is this is 110 pound cardstock. You could use any weight. It doesn't matter. It might even work out better with a lighter cardstock, but this is what I'm using because it's my scraps. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually get out my decal trimmer. And uh, this is the voiceover, so you don't have to hear the loudness. Let me get a little more light here because it's dark right now. And I'm just going to start cutting off teeny tiny slivers of paper. The smaller the better. And I'll tell you, sometimes your decal trimmer, and you can do this with a straight trimmer as well, or you can tear the paper. Um, sometimes it'll kind of get trapped there, and so you have to give it a few bangs to get it going, but that's okay. The more torn up the paper, the better. So I'm just going to cut into this thing until I feel like I have enough scraps. See what I mean? It gets kind of caught there. Until I feel like I have enough scraps to um, make my faux textured paper. So here's a good pile of scraps. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to get out a piece of uh, five and a quarter by, uh, no, let me see, four and a quarter by five and a half, uh, 100 pound, 110 pound cardstock. And I'm going to get a couple of dispressed distress bear well, I can't talk today distress sprays I've got the pumice stone and the kitsch flamingo and I'm going to get out my little my little splat box that I made which is just a box from Simon Says Stamps and um see I'm kind of liking that that little paper underneath but n never mind that I'm just going to put my paper down and I'm going to lay down my scraps just like in a kind of a random pattern, because I want to repeat kind of the pattern on the background of the paper so that all the colors match up. And I'll just take and start spraying with my Distress Spray, this Puma Stone and the Kitsch Flamingo. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to spray not only the paper, but the little paper pieces as well. So once I get the paper sprayed the way I want it, then I'll remove the paper and I'll stir up the scraps. So this can get messy. Um, that would be me. Um, so I just stir up the scraps and spray them some more and just keep spraying them until they're all pretty fully colored. And off camera, I did spray a little bit of the seedless preserves on there as well because I wanted some dark colors but I just stir them around and spray them some more. And you can use different colored papers. I, I did do one with different colored papers, so it doesn't have to be white scrap, it could be any scrap. And it doesn't matter if they get kinked or whatever, just so long as you, um, see I'm gonna go in here with a little bit of antique linen as well, just kind of for some variation because I don't know, you know, I'm trying to keep color families, or not families, but groups together. Anyway, we just want to let that dry. Now that it's dry, I've got a piece of uh, scrap paper underneath, and I've got my paper that I already had sprayed and dried. And I'm going to just take my Distress Collage Medium, and I found this little leaf that I made, so I'm going to throw that on there too. Why not, you know? It's supposed to look like handmade paper. Um, but I'm going to take this collage medium, and this one is the crazing one. Uh, it's the only one I have, and I don't notice any difference between it and the regular. But I'm just going to just completely spread it all over this piece of paper so that I can glue down my little slivers of scrap. And I put my brush in water, and then I realized I didn't mean to because I'm going to be using it again but I'm gonna go ahead and just start laying these little scraps out. And maybe this is too much work for you, but you know, it's just something different, something to add, you know, some interest and texture to your design and use up some of your scraps. 
And I, I actually discovered that on accident. You know how when you're cutting a card or you have a card and it's kind of off on the side and so you trim it down so it's nice and even and you've got those skinny slivers of paper and I thought, well, these I like the looks of these papers, so let's play with this. So I'm just kind of laying all these down and kind of willy-nilly, but I want to make sure, you know, get coverage over the whole thing. And it's okay if it's thick in some areas. And I'm just going to take a piece of parchment and push down on it with the parchment uh, to kind of help it flatten down some. And that flattens it some, but then, you know, I'm going to go in and just get my... Um, Get them more, you know, organized there, the ones that aren't already stuck. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay some of the collage medium over top of that so that I can make sure everything's good and stuck. Now, it's okay if some pieces stick out. Not a big deal. But I'm just going to lay this over the top. I want to make sure that my little leaf stays down. I'm just gonna kind of dab that on and it's okay if it's thick in some spots and not thick in others doesn't matter because we're making texture here so I'm just gonna keep laying that on making sure everything's good and covered and then I'm gonna take my parchment paper again and I'm gonna press down on it just to make sure that everything sticks and it's kind of flat if it is I'll just pull my parchment paper up and we'll want to let that dry completely and now that it's dry, you can see that the colors have lightened up and so on, and it's a matte texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim off all this excess off the sides because we don't need all that. Can save it for another project. I don't think I will this time, but you can. And the main reason I'm gonna trim these down is because the next step is putting it through an embossing folder. And what the embossing folder does is it helps press that paper in it's it's pretty cool i love it so i'm gonna go ahead and grab my little container of embossing folders here and select one and i'll probably select the one i keep picking which is one with the kind of wildflowers on it yeah that one and i have it marked so i know which side is the front because i don't care what people tell me on how to figure out where the front is my brain doesn't do it <laughs> So I'm just going to lay this piece of paper in that embossing folder and then I'm going to take another piece of parchment paper because I don't want any of that stuff sticking to my folder and I'm just going to lay that parchment paper down inside. You could use, it, mainly you want to use something non-stick, but um, let me just get that scooted down so it's not folded over too much. And I'm going to go ahead and run that through my... Um, my vagabond here and I'm only going to run it through one time because it's not necessarily to go back and forth with it you can if you want to but once you've got that done you'll see it really presses all that paper down into the um, main piece of paper giving it a really super organic look and I like that look but I'm going to take my Distress Crayon, and I'm going to use Age Mahogany because it's just one of my favorites. And I'm going to kind of go over the raised parts here and there to kind of pronounce more, you know, more of the texture on that paper. And just, to, you know, random places, and you could use more than one color if you wanted to. But I really like this color, and I felt like it helped pull in the darker pieces of paper that I had sprayed there. I really do like how... I have some stationery that belonged to my mother, and it's just little note cards, and it's, it's handmade paper. And I absolutely love handmade paper, but do I want to make it myself? No, because I probably... Well, A, something new I'd have to learn, and B, I probably don't have the time or space to do it. But I love it, hers, because it's organic. It's got like little little flower petals in it and little pieces of, I don't know, organic debris of some sort. I just love it. It's so cool. So that's kind of the look I'm trying to get here. So depending on, you know, the how you color your little 
your little strands of paper is going to be how dramatic or not dramatic it looks. And what I want to do to continue on with that kind of rustic look is I'm going to go ahead and trim this down to four and a four by five and a quarter on um and I'm going to trim it on all sides so that I've got a decal on the edges as well giving it again some more organic kind of look and you might have to fight I have to fight with my decal trimmer I don't know what if it's supposed to be that way or what happens but sometimes it doesn't want to cut all the way down but if I just give it a few chops it'll chop it off and there's more pieces you could save, but I, I probably won't. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take that age mahogany uh, distress crayon again, and I'm just gonna go all along the edges there, very lightly, mainly focusing on the very outside edge, the white part. And spread it out with my fingers, cause I can't think of any better way to get that stuff on there. You could do this with ink. You could do it however you, you could skip it if you wanted to. I just think it's a step that really, really helps bring out the, I don't know, the cohesion of the whole thing. So now we've got our background there. Now I need to make something out of it. And what I'm gonna do here is, I'll tell you, I just cut a whole bunch out of here because I started out wanting to do maybe some flowers and the flowers just kind of got lost in the whole organic paper because of the dark portions. So I changed my mind and I cut that whole part out where I had already cut out the flowers and everything. So I've got some extra flowers there, but um, what I decided to do instead is to use the uh, leaves from the uh, 3D Impresslets. And I go ahead and grab my leaves. And I love these little folders, I think they're so cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab some craft cardstock um, because I'm gonna be making the background or the card base craft. So I wanna have everything kinda come together as a, in harmony, <laughs> as whole. I'd like to share a Coke with you. Anyway, let me find some craft cardstock here, and I'm only going to cut out two, just these two leaves. I don't want it too busy. I'll go ahead and give that paper a little spritz there, and I'll send that through my Vagabond. You can see my mess. This is, this is the, the story of my crafting. Um, where, what you can't see is all my alcohol ink and the wire where I'm trying to twist wire around a bottle and <laughs> color it with alcohol ink, which is why it's all over my fingers. But um, I do fight a little bit with these impresslets in my Vagabond and, um, you know, it likes to shoot them out. So <laughs> I like to kind of make it so it will not shoot them out. But alas, it doesn't, it ends up not shooting them out once I finally get it settled. And I'll just take these little leaves out. And I really like the color of that craft paper against there, but I am going to enhance those leaves a bit again with that mahogany crayon. Um, just kind of so, again, the background is so, so busy that I really need to kind of pull things together here. And I'm going to think I'm going to put my leaves right about there. And I'll go ahead and grab my aged mahogany crayon and start to do around the edges and the raised portions of these leaves. And I just draw the crayon on and then rub it in with my finger. It's the best way to use these crayons. Now you can put a little water on there to thin it out or something like that, but I like it fairly concentrated. I like to get all the edges and it just really kind of deepens and darkens the whole thing. And then I just rub it in a little bit more and then just really lightly go over that with the crayon and rub it in. There we've got one of our leaves. Let me go ahead and grab the other leaf. And I'm gonna think I'm gonna stick pretty much just to the edges and it's, it doesn't take long at all. I'm just gonna quickly go around it and then rub it in. And I had enough crayon on there to cover the whole thing. So we've got a little bit of variation there in our leaves, but it still looks like a mama leaf and her baby leaf. 
<laughs> and I decide that I, I do want a cinnamon on here and I still want to break up some of this background because again it ended up being pretty darn busy and so I started thinking well I want it to be kind of a thankful Thanksgiving thanks fall type Thing. So I'm looking for my Simon Says stamps from uh, last year's, I want to say it was the October release for the uh, card kit of the month. And I think it's called Big Thanks or something like that. But uh, as usual, hunting something down in my stuff <laughs> is not, not an, always an easy task. So there's this stamp set, and I'm going to use the big thanks in there. And what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to actually stamp that onto some vellum. And I think I'll also heat emboss. So I'm just going to pull out that thanks stamp and find my vellum. And I do use the, I use the Hero Arts vellum, and it really embosses very nicely. Just kind of deciding on placement on that and how I want to do it. And I decide that I most likely just want to do like a band so that it, it folds around the back. So you don't have to see any glue or any other kind of sticky. So now I'm hunting for my vellum. <laughs> I really need to organize my craft room. I do it all the time and then, you know, move stuff around while I'm getting something else and, and right back where the same place I was. But I know I put it in this container, but my brain can't find it. It's there, though. And again, this is the, um, what I want to be using is the Hero Arts. And then I cut out another huge chunk of the first thanks I did because... When I went to fold it, I got some of that embossing uh, or that crayon on it and I folded it in the wrong spot and had a crease mark and I'm like, okay, that's just, no, I, there's no way I can hide that. So let me start over. So what I'm gonna end up doing is cutting off a piece of this vellum so that I can use it, you know, the all the way across the, um, all the way across the card. So I am going to cut the vellum with my decal trimmer. And it may have cut, you know, maybe a little too much, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. And so this was the first piece of vellum that I messed up on. And um, I end up having to cut a whole nother piece. And not only that, I wasn't happy with the way it trimmed either, but what I'm trying to do there is just make sure that I get enough width on it to get that thanks on there. So you'll see me put that aside, and the next thing you're going to see is my other trimmer, <laughs> where I'm trimming off another piece of vellum. Um, and I'll trim it off from the side that I cut the decal, and I'll trim it straight on the other side. And kind of get the size that I want or that I think I want. It's funny how you, when you're card making or something, you, you have to try things on and see how they fit. Um, I don't just naturally know what to do. I make a lot of mistakes before I figure out what's right. But I'm going to go ahead and lay this piece of vellum in my, um, my regular Misty. Get that out of my way there. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my embossing buddy to make sure that there's no fingerprints or anything that the embossing powder can stick to. And I just can't help it, but I'm just so amazed about how well this stuff, um, because you saw I was doing a really thick sentiment. And you know how sometimes when you're doing something thick, you get a lot of pitting and stuff like that. I didn't find any of that with this. And I did use a Ranger Gold Superfine embossing powder um, so I'm gonna go ahead and place my stamp and then I'm gonna get my um, Versa Versa mark yeah Versa mark and go ahead and coat my stamp in it and stamp that down it stamps perfectly the first time which made me happy and um, then I'm going to grab my gold heat embossing gold powder. And it's okay that there's a little bit of black on there because it's not going to show through the gold. 
Let me just get my misty out of the way here. And I'm not gonna trim that at all. I'm going to go ahead and just coat it with the gold embossing powder. And then I'll go ahead and just emboss down that thanks word. And um, by the way, my heat tool is heating up in the background. So I do recommend you let it heat up really well before you start embossing. But again, I'm super impressed with this vellum. It doesn't, didn't buckle at all. It didn't, it, it was gray. It's just really good stuff. So what I do though, is I do pull my heat tool off time to time and then put it back on just to make sure I'm not set in one place at, you know, the same place at one time, um, ensuring, you know, that the paper doesn't warp on me too much. I'm really happy with how that came out. And, um, you know, it's a huge sentiment, so it takes up a lot of space on the card. So I am gonna trim that vellum down some with the decal because that's just way too wide. I don't want to take up the entire card. And plus that, I'm wanting to put one other thing on there and you'll see you'll see here in a moment what we're going to do. But I'm going to go ahead and just uh, line that thanks up with the uh, guide inside of the decal trimmer. And just trim it on both sides so it's nice and even. There we go. All nice and even. I'm not even gonna, I'm gonna save those two pieces because I'm sure I'll find a use for them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my background and I'm gonna line up that thanks. And then once I have it lined up, I'm gonna just take one side and I'm gonna fold it over and kind of crease it. And then I'll go to the other side and fold that side over and crease it. That way I make sure I get the crease in the right place the first time. Because <laughs> again, that sentiment is pretty big. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to glue these together. These two pieces of vellum. Just glue them together on the back. And it still be movable. It's still kind of like a belly band at this point. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and take my bone folder and just make the crease there on the back side. Just kind of wait for that to dry. Give it a little bit of push to make sure it's good and stuck down. And then I'll set that aside while I do this other part. So what I wanted to do, as soon as I spotted it, I wanted that bird. I don't have a lot of bird stamps and I really do like like them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do stamp him down also on vellum and heat embossed with gold. So I'm going to grab my mini Misty here. I'm going to grab my vellum and I'm just going to trim a piece off here that he can sit on. Because I'm going to fussy cut him out. He's not, it's a very simple image, super easy to cut out. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of trim around there as to not waste too much paper. And I'm going to lay the paper down in my, in my uh, mini Misty and coat it with my embossing buddy. Place my little bird so I'm sure the whole thing is stamped. I, I, I know I can't tell you how many times how much I love this mini Misty. It's the best investment I ever made because I use it more than anything. And it's not, not so clunky. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the Versamark ink again. Make sure he's good and coated, he or she, I don't know, whoever. Make sure they are good and coated. And press it down pretty firmly. And I know it's really hard to see. In fact, you probably can't see it at all, but I can see a good imp impression there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my bird off there and close up my mini Misty and I'm gonna grab my gold heat embossing powder. And again, my embossing tool, my heat tool is warming up in the background. So I can't even get over how perfect that laid on there. Again, that's the Ranger um, embossing powder in gold. It's super fine in gold, just plain gold. There's a lot of different, there's a couple of different golds. I have the princess gold and I have the regular gold. This is just the regular gold. 
and I'll go ahead and just emboss this, melt the embossing powder on this bird here. And it looks just lovely, but, but I'm just gonna cool it for a second here and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm just gonna add a little bit of color. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my um, aged mahogany crayon again. And I'm just gonna lay a little bit on and then rub it in with my finger. So it's just real light color, barely even noticeable when you flip it over. But I'm gonna do the body in this and then I'm gonna do the head in an antique bronze because it's the first one I grabbed and it was within the right color range of what I'm trying to do here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rub that in on its head. And you'll see when I flip it over, it's just got a hint of color to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and fussy cut this guy out. And I am gonna leave a little bit of a border best I can. I'm bad at leaving borders. I can cut away from borders, but I'm terrible at leaving borders. Just, I can't seem to get, you know, it exactly the same all the way around. It's bigger in some spots and smaller in some, but I'm just going to let that be. <laughs> you know, I try to correct it best I can, but mostly I'm just going to let it be. And trim around him. And again, it's a lot easier to fussy cut too if you're not trying to get these teeny tiny spaces. I'm gonna, you know, leave the center entirely because the, the branch is gonna be mostly hidden anyway. Um, underneath the uh, underneath the other piece of vellum there. So I'm just gonna leave a little bit of an edge there and go ahead and just trim this off and kind of round up this corner a bit. And there's my little bird. And I'm gonna decide on placement. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my leaves in first. And I'm gonna have him kind of sitting sort of on top of the leaves. Just again, deciding, trying things on, seeing where I want things to be. And it ends up that I really kind of want him in between those two leaves sort of. So first thing I'm gonna do is glue down the leaves cause birds going on top. And I'm gonna be using again, my reptile adhesive. I'm gonna just lay glue there on that leaf. And you have to put it kind of thick because the leaves are, you know, um, sort of indented with the embossing that they do. And so you wanna make sure that the glue touches all, you know, all the surfaces so that it'll stick. Cause you've got to, textured surface on the background as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my larger leaf where I want it, kind of underneath that thanks there a little bit. I'm just gonna press that down until it kind of takes hold. Okay. And go ahead, go ahead and use my little, um, just put a little bit of weight on that to kind of make sure that the glue gets evenly dispersed because this glue does spread out. A little bit more pressure. Okay, now I'm gonna decide on my placement of my bird. And I think I'm gonna go, eh, well, We'll see, we'll see, we'll see where that, that bird's gonna go. I don't want him to completely cover, cover the little leaf. So what I'm gonna do here is, after I decide where I wanna put him, yeah, I think right about there makes me happy. Right about in the middle between the A and the N. I'm going to get out some double-sided sticky tape and I'm gonna place the tape along the bottom where the branch is. And I find my the right size tape here. And I just take that tape and kind of cut it up, eyeball it how, how much I need. Cause I don't like working off the roll. I know some people do work off the roll, but it, I just, it's annoying to me, so. I'm just gonna place the tape down here and kind of bend it and fold it as needed so that it fits along there. 
and then I'll trim off the excess and then I want to take that little excess piece and I want to glue it where most of the embossing is on the wing of the bird so that you won't be able to really see it but I want you know just a little extra stability on that and then I'm going to go ahead and just pull off that uh, backing of that sticky tape Sometimes if my eyesight isn't all that great, so I, I struggle. I'm going to find my placement for them, but I'm not going to push down until I have them exactly where I want them. Now I'm going to just go ahead and push down, and there's our little bird. So you'll see that that band portion is still movable, so I can adjust it how I want it. And then once I have adjusted where I want it, I'm gonna grab myself a craft card base. It's always a hunt, of course. And I keep them all in the same place, but I have lots of them, so <laughs> lots of colors. I'm gonna go ahead and just use glue, liquid glue. And uh, yeah, this is my reptile adhesive. And uh, trust me, I'm not trying to sell reptile adhesive it's just what I've been using for I don't know a couple of years and it's always been my friend so I just keep using it and I'm going to place that just right down you know make sure I kind of get it halfway even around all sides that's the cool thing about the decal is that you don't necessarily have to get it perfect <laughs> because the decal isn't straight you know completely straight but I go ahead and put just a little bit of weight on that and let that glue kind of get get to it while I get out my embellishments. Um, and I decided I'm gonna do these gold um, confetti from Honey Bee stamps. Love that stuff. Um, and it, you know, it kind of pulls in the gold of the thanks and things like that. And I'm not gonna do a whole bunch. I'm gonna do, you know, probably five. I'm gonna just press down and make sure that that's stuck down on all sides there. And then I'm gonna grab my little bottle of glue again, and I'm again just gonna use the reptile adhesive, and I'm going to place my glue where I want these little pieces of confetti to be. And I usually start with the top and end with the bottom. Then I've got my little wax pencil and I'm gonna lay down just, boop, boop, Kathy, 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 <laughs> boop, <laughs> I can't, can't not do it, right guys? Okay, so, and then I'll go ahead and I'm gonna put a couple along the bottom. And I'm just putting varying sizes, you know, big, small, whatever. Since we're going all out texture, we're going all out texture. You could do this in a green, in shades of green, in blue, shades of blue, rainbow. I mean, the sky's the limit on this idea. And I will show you here a couple of other ones that I've done and um, how I accomplished them um, as soon as we're done here. So there we go, that's that's this card for you. And I think it came out pretty cool, don't you? And let me go ahead and just show you here some of the other ones that I've done. Now this one, I used a leaf embossing folder and I used a, a lot of uh, dis Distress Spray stains for coloring. And then, you know, decorated the card this one, I actually cut out the textured paper that was done with the spray stains. Again, the uh, peppermint and the, I don't know, the other pinky one with the Christmas Distress Spray Stains uh, Micas. Uh, this is uh, another background that I did similar to the one you see here. And then I did a snowflake as well. And finally, here's the finished of this card. I wanna thank you for watching and um, Thank you for being subscribed to my channel. If you're not, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you 
want to know the next time I upload a video, hit that notification bell. And as always, leave me some comments in the comment section. I'm always happy to answer questions or hear your thoughts on things. Have a good one.